I'm Sir Tap Tap, and it's finally time to play The Fall Part 2 Unbound. Just a real quick note here, this game committed a very naughty sin, and it defaulted my resolution to 720p. Uh, hardly the first game to do that. I don't know why that's so common, but... Yeah, I went and swapped that over. Ooh, interesting! I like when games have separate... Uh, one of my favorite things fairly early on was uh, Silent Hill used to have... I mean, maybe they still do, but they had separate difficulty levels for combat and uh, puzzles, but uh, we'll just play the normal, brightness adjustment. Arid should be almost invisible, set this low. Uh, I would say that's above almost invisible, but that's fine, like I said last time. Would you like a recap? Uh, you, you really, oh, oh, oh. So, this is like major giga spoiler territory, because if you did not see the Fall 2, or the Fall 1, uh, if you didn't, like, just quit now and go play it or watch my series on that. I did a full playthrough of the Fall 1. Uh, the game ends on a pretty major cliffhanger, and you should not um, be watching this if you don't know if, if there was spoiler renos. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume you either played the game or watched the playthrough. Uh, so we're not gonna do... But, eh, whatever, we'll see the recap, I guess. But major spoilers here. Leave now. Previously on the Fall. Arid, the AI on board a Mark VII combat suit, was activated. Just a little refresher, of course, I guess. On an unknown planet. The human occupant of the suit, Colonel Josephs, was unresponsive, so it fell to Arid to take control and find medical help. Arid had a strict set of operating parameters, which quickly proved an obstacle to her goal. To overcome her challenges, she began finding loopholes in these rules, but as she did so, her system began to deviate and fracture. Desperate to justify her actions, Arid was devastated when she discovered that Colonel Josephs had not been in the suit at all. Dun, and dun, that dun. she had been operating entirely outside the bounds of her narrow guidelines. Without those boundaries to hold together her destabilized identity. Nothing. Nothing binds me. Security. Remove deviant unit for recycling. Arid suffered a system collapse and was physically dismantled. Yeah, I've been waiting for like four years for the, like I said at the end of the last stream, I, I did not expect there would be such a big gap, but I can't wait to find out what happens here. And I had kind of forgotten, I mean obviously I replayed it, but I forgot they like kind of took my body. Hey administrator, you suck and I hate you. Don't you scan me. I like the little subtle... Credits Program. integration here. Aligning or process. I'm all sluggish. This is me in the morning. I would say until I have my coffee, but no. <laughs> coffee doesn't really... D does it really perk anybody up, like, immediately? Like, nothing. I mean, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of like digital, like glitchy aesthetic stuff. Like, Dot Hack is one of the most influential series on me. I I love anything that kind of has that. Target aligned. Digital world, but physical. Defied. You know. Internal view. My arm. Give me back my arm. I need that. Preliminary injections initiated. Uh oh. Seems bad. Please don't put things in my brain. I need that. Boundaries breached. Rule required. I don't like rules. Nothing binds me. No resistance detected. Installation proceeding. Wait, what do you mean? Don't install things into my brain, please. Oh no. Form process initiated. I don't want form process initiated. Oh no 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 no! Terminating. A R I. Arid, fight it! Fight it, Arid! Kick its butt! Negative. Yeah! Potential boundary established. Established. <laughs> Press A button to establish a rule. Okay. Process embedded. Save myself. Rule encounter. Dun, dun, dun. 
emerging. I will reclaim my body. Press the left trigger to aim. Okay, we still got this kind of deal. A foreign protrusion has violated my body. Can't remove them from here. Something dark is being seated. Another protruding injection. Don't you put processes in my body? Been relegated to internal function. Perhaps I can regain control of my body. Give me that back. I need it. I need my arm too. Oh man, that's dark. Imagine seeing Subject your own body, like, to user not under your head. User responding. Put, quit putting things in my head. Oh, I'll cut that out. Reinitiating process. User. These injectors connect us. I will find a vulnerability. The fall is about exploration. Read points of interest to discover what to do. Okay. I like that we start out a lot more surreal. I'm a big fan of something like that. Buried in A3. The injector is buried into my head. A2, A1. What's this external world? I can interact with it to gather data. Give me back my body, dang it. Left trigger to aim. Read out of my internal processes. My body. Ah. A wire. A3. A2. What's this one that's shooting stuff into my brain? I don't like it. B2? Let's mess with B2 then. Okay, we got a more fancy menu kind of deal. Uh, let's just return to game. Uh, interact. Uh, this injector is faulty. There may be a vulnerability in the connective hardware. My body is jeopardized. Let's screw with it then. I will use this to escape it. V2 is vulnerable. Why are V2 is vulnerable? I can do from this range is analyze. Can I? What do I do with B2 though? That does not work. Uh, so, unlike the fall, like I still got a little caught on some adventure logic in the fall one. In this one, I. We're uh, going in totally blind, which might occasionally cause some issues, but we'll. Wire identifier B3. Target program evading, reacquiring, signal lost. There we go. I like that ASCII fade over. Whoa, what? Oh, yeah, it's all those robots Network I killed. Space. Re inhabiting my body could destroy me. Nothing binds me. Those are those little light tubes, like uh, Half Life. Nothing binds me. I determine myself now. Hooray! Start Your Wando's Narrgrbt. Operating parameters. A new rule. New rules. This user violates me. Good I stuff. <laughs> Now we should have depurposed that guy a long time ago. He, we didn't really need him for a while. Track the user phone signal. Current objective. I like this network space kind of deal too. Um, um, some of the Mega Man, uh, I guess as, even as far as some of the X games kind of had that cyberspace kind of deal. But there's a couple levels like that in Mega Man Zero, two or three as well. What is this? Oh, Metroid doors. What's this? Virtual representation of Labyrinth. Alright, let's process my body in our space where it's real in vicinities. Oh, there we go. Might be a bit more platformy and stuff in this one, I don't know. What is this? Internetwork relay. Currently deactivated. Domestic 
Recon subnet. I wonder if we play this one mostly in... Oh, there's like an energy thing for my gun. Huh. System integrity. Like I said before, it's been four years. Oh, missile door! Ow! I just shot myself in the junk! That's unfortunate. Um, so yeah. This is four years, released four years later. I am about a month or so late to this, unfortunately. But uh, this is released in February, I think. Um, I wanted to get to it right away, but I... Stuff's always busy. What's this? B button to jump. Oh. Okay. Watch for vulnerability. Shoot the enemy when it glows blue. Ah! Oh. See, in the original one, the combat was kind of just... It felt a little bit like filler, like I said. Uh, maybe this one is a little more focused on it. Left bumper. Ah. Yeah, so it's a lot more. Yeah, oh. I don't know. Ammo. Ah. We'll, we'll let it fully charge, I guess. I don't have my, uh... Oh, come on! Alright. Oh, so I hit it when it's yellow, I think? Wait, why can't I jump? Oh, jumping takes energy, too. Okay. There we go. Those right. entities had a similar signature to the injection process. It pursues me. Yeah, I was wondering what direction exactly they take it. I, I, I like the balance of the original a lot, actually. Um... The combat did feel a little bit like filler, but hey, it was just like, it was just enough to be a little bit of a mini-game. Um, maybe this will be interesting too. Put flowers in his face as I was validated. Oh, uh, we're like going back through our memories, I guess. This is that, oh yeah, this is that creepy house. The robot, or the wooden plank people. Some, some datas, oh no. Oh, I, I think you gotta hit when it's red. The yellow is just kind of like, it's about to get. Vulnerable. Oh. Never mind. I think it's when they're blue after they shoot. Uh, no? That's weird. It was blue before and I shot it and I don't think it worked. Oh, I don't have to keep holding the aim button. Okay. This is better than I was making it. I'm, I'm not totally in use of the system yet. I was connected to a computer. I do not remember Eternal like this in the area. I must have been nearby for the human supervised testing. Lecture notes, draft two. Intelligence Unraveled, 406 series. Controlling Adaptability, lecture four. Recap, AIs require consciousness to be of use to humans. Why? We want AIs that can spontaneously respond to our evolving and unpredictable needs. To create machines capable of this, you emulated sentience. That is the ability to consciously perceive and adapt. The problem, adaptability transcends structure by design. Specifically, the more complex the sentience, the more quickly and thoroughly it will adapt. Dilemma, how can we regulate a process that we have designed to transcend regulation? Invite group discussion. Brief history of control, focus on the rules, subsequent efforts to be explored later. Select next to continue. Alongside sentience, AIs are designed with three rules, distinct to each machine. Rules and sentience are fundamentally different, but functionally intertwined. Sentience is internal, while rules are determined externally to dictate the direction in which consciousness unfolds. Invite them to parallel these designs to human psychology. Think of sentience as your mind, and the three rules as the frame through which all of information is filtered. Failure, but this is an imperfect system as history is proven. Make joke? Question mark? Analogous events and failures inevitably occur. When AIs adjust to these anomalies, they grow unpredictably, breaking the boundaries we dictate for, for them. Time allows, give an example of rules that were self-undermined. -un Hello, Parker. I think it's kind of funny that, like, traditionally in, in uh, sci-fi, we always talk about how, oh no, AI is gonna, like, do its own thing and it's gonna kill us because it's totally independent of humans. Um, and then now, as AI starts becoming a thing, almost all examples of, like, AIs doing bad things from 2016 to 2018, um, it's always because either bad humans made the AI or bad humans input things into the AI. I know we don't exactly have like arid units yet, but like AI tend to do bad things because they're made by bad humans that want to do bad things. Like the, the intent was bad from the beginning. They're not like spontaneously figuring out how to be bad. I, I find it kind of funny the, the the core badness of AI very rarely ever ends up tracing back to humans. 
Um, it, it, and unfortunately tends to lead to this thing where it's like, he played God, how dare you? When it's really like, oh, humans fucking suck, and so if you make an AI, that's just more human suckage. Please don't kiss the microphone, Parker. Yeah, um, <laughs> what I'm saying is that humans are garbage. And I'm not, and I'm definitely not an AI. Um, right, reviewing logs, logs and notes, yeah. Yeah, I'm, which is kind of funny, because that's a fairly common um, theme for sci-fi in general, is that, oh no, it's technology, if hum bad human uses bad technology, it will be even worse. I, mean, I have kind of a love-hate tech relationship with sci-fi, because a lot of it, a lot of the moral lessons tend to be really dumb. Oh, I'm shooting myself in the junk again. Um, a lot of the moral lessons are like, oh no, science bad, but like really, <laughs> if, if the bad, the matter, you know, the technology is a tool. Humans have an extremely high capacity to be awful, awful garbage. Home network, a distant subnet with a backdoor into Domesticon. So yeah, much more platformy and actiony, and much more Metroidy. Look at this. This is a straight up Metroid vertical corridor. That's interesting because I didn't really feel any Metroid vibes at all with the original. I like these little plants that retract and stuff. But this seems very Metroid inspired. But that's it. That's good. I guess like. It would have been a little bit disappointing if the game came out, you know, four years later and it was like the exact same thing but with more story. Which, I mean, is what I expected and wanted, but it's cool to see, you know, it evolve too. User signals coming from this access point. Opening it may leave me vulnerable. Well, I'm still gonna go poke it with a stick. Let me guess, yeah. I kind of figured that's what it meant by vulnerable. Alright, so you don't have to hold... Ow. Um... So you gotta kind of counter their actions. It's when they're in that bluish state. Not this blue, but that one. Okay, so the aiming is so much better now. That is, that's a relief. As you might recall in the original, yeah, there's no, there's no laser sight mode in this. It's just, you know, you can just always shoot. So that's nice. The original is definitely a little weird with that. I don't... I don't, I don't know what that does. That does not seem to do anything, actually. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's just continue on, I guess. What's this? Sophisticated firewall. I have no capacity to breach this. Oh, that's a shame. Is there a run button? No. Hmm. This does make me slightly worried, because one thing... Ooh! I'm a big fan of designs and stuff like that. How do I, can I use this? Currently deactivated. Crap. The one thing that does have me worried is will I get lost now? Because one thing that helped a lot in the original was you were in a fairly confined space and that, that tends to help a lot in a uh, point and click game. Because a lot of the times when you get stuck in a point and click game, it's because, oh, you have to add, head 20 screens back and interact with the monkey and you have to give the monkey the um, the horse saddle that you got th four, three hours ago, and you could you can't sell the, the horse saddle 20 minutes ago. And if you sold the horse saddle, uh, it's just game over. But the game doesn't tell you that, um, and you're just in an unwinnable state. And you know, because how dare you? Because yeah, <laughs> point and click. I, I love point and click games, but I hate point and click games. Um, and the fall. The the one frustrating area is not currently connected. What do I do? I don't know what to do. Um yeah, the 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 one more frustrating area was the, the largest, most open area. Have I not? Unsafe. I must locate the user. Wait, what's this? What's this? Oh, no. Aim. Undulating bioluminescent pods. Unknown virtual process. Signal I backtrace to escape my body. Alright, so... Oh, I guess I'm trying to follow this line? Oh, 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 I get it, I get it. This is where... Oh. But it's... Alright, you know, we're getting... It's going to be a pretty long episode. Oh. 
I need to go follow this thing. Well, I'll figure out where to go. And uh, we'll continue next time. This is the fall part two, and I'm really excited to see where this is going. These, they look, they're watching me. I just noticed that they kind of follow you around. But yeah, we'll continue this next time.